So, Mac Studio or MacBook Pro? I've got five questions for you. Thanks to the M1 chip, we're now finally living in a world where no Mac user has to suffer because of their budget. Every Mac from the base level M1 to the hold onto your trousers M1 Ultra will deliver big time for its intended use. In fact, the only way you can screw this up is if you are a true power user who doesn't reach for the spec that you know you need. I see this all the time in the comments section of my YouTube videos. I'm unsure whether or not to go for the 16 gigabyte M1 chip, they'll say. I undertake lots of video editing work and use Photoshop regularly. I'm worried that the eight gigabyte version won't be enough. My response is always the same. Just spend as much as you can afford to avoid any form of buyer's remorse. Then just enjoy the machine that arrives because I can guarantee it will exceed your expectations no matter what you do with it. But what if you're saddled with the choice of a MacBook Pro or the new Mac Studio? Let me help you make that decision with five super simple questions. So question number one is what is your budget? And this might be where your conundrum started because the base level 14 inch MacBook Pro and the base level Mac Studio roughly share the same price of $1,999. Unless you're in the UK, of course, where the former starts at £1,899 for some unfathomable reason. But the fact remains that if you spec either of these Macs up, you can spend well beyond $6,000. On that basis, you'd be forgiven for thinking that we're playing in the exact same ballpark with these two machines. But there's one crucial difference, which is that the MacBook Pro comes complete with a display, a key keyboard and a trackpad. The Mac Studio comes complete with a power cable. This immediately changes the outlook somewhat and makes question four later on absolutely unavoidable. But first, set a budget that you're comfortable with, write it down and move on to the next question. Question two is do you need shed loads of multi-core performance? If there's one consistent theme among the Mac Studio coverage on YouTube, including mine, it's the conclusion that very few people need the universe bending power of the M1 Ultra chip. But this is the first thing you need to think about. And that's because you might sit within that camp. For instance, if you want to use your Mac to edit multiple streams of 8K video or regularly push the boundaries of audio production with thousands of tracks, and if every single second during your production process matters, then the M1 Ultra is absolutely for you. But trust me, you sit within such a small category of users, and I would guess that most people watching this guide will know deep down that they do not need the power offered by the M1 Ultra. So I'm going to assume that you've stopped watching this video if you're currently trying to redesign the universe, but if you're still watching, Let's move on to the next question. Question three is how mobile are you? So I noted recently that the 16 inch MacBook Pro is a questionable daily carry, and that's due to its rucksack bending size and occasionally irritating heft. By comparison, the 14 inch MacBook Pro is a wonderfully portable laptop. It slots perfectly onto pretty much any desk and feels really satisfying when you sling it under your arm. The Mac Studio isn't portable, okay, you can carry it around, it's very small, but it's designed to sit in one place. But what's interesting is that even though I purchased my 16 inch MacBook Pro before the Mac Studio was announced, if I was gonna buy a Mac today, I would still buy the 16 inch MacBook Pro. The ability to edit studios either here in the studio or on my dining room table at home makes that MacBook Pro an absolutely essential computer for me. So could you live with a powerful Mac in a fixed position like the Mac Studio needs to be, or do you need it to be more mobile? Only you can answer that question. Question four is how much do you want a retina screen? So as noted earlier, the Mac Studio isn't exactly adorned with extras. And in order to actually use it, you'll need a mouse, a keyboard, a trackpad, and a display. But those extras shouldn't halt your decision-making process too much. Whether or not you want the overpriced Apple magic devices, they're not magic, or if you'd rather shop third party, there are options for every budget but the display is a different matter. If you're used to a retina display, be it on an iMac, a MacBook, an iPad, or even an iPhone, and you want one for your new Mac, you have two options. The first is to buy the MacBook Pro and bask in the glory of that liquid retina XDR ProMotion display. And the second is to buy yourself a studio display. Just bear in mind that the latter option will add $1,599 to your bill. Apple's studio display has garnered quite a lot of bad press and derision since its release back in March. But if you want a big display that features a 5K resolution and super sharp pixel density that isn't the $6,000 Pro Display XDR, 
there's literally no other option. It really does hold the keys when it comes to a 5K display, and Apple knows that. Trust me, if you go for a Mac Studio and opt for a different monitor from a different brand, it's just not gonna look as good as the Retina displays that you're used to. So we're back to the budget question once again. If you need or want a Retina display, can you stomach adding such a costly extra as the price of your Mac Studio? Or does the MacBook Pro represent better value? Only you can answer that. Lastly, question number five, and you probably weren't expecting this one, should you be looking at an alternative? It bears repeating what I said at the start of this buying guide. Every Mac from the base level M1 to the hold on to your trousers M1 Ultra will deliver big time for its intended use. Apple Silicon really has democratized computing power if you're a Mac user, which is fantastic because if I didn't have my M1 Mac 16 inch MacBook Pro, I could still happily edit my 4K YouTube videos on the M1 Mac mini behind me. I could even do so on the base spec M1 Air that I have if I had no other choice. Now, I know you have your sights set on that MacBook Pro or that shiny Mac Studio, but there's a chance you could save yourself a huge amount of cash by opting for either the Mac Mini, like the one behind me, or the 24 inch iMac, or even the MacBook Air. So before you commit to that big purchase, check out either this video above for the Mac Mini, or keep watching for a link to my buying guide for the awesome M1 MacBook Air. And if you're hanging around, let me know in the comments what you're gonna go for. But until next time, thank you as always for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video.